So I just read an article claiming that mathematics has essentially ended simulation theory, that the universe cannot be a simulation because reality contains something non-algorithmic, something computation can't capture. And the moment I saw that, I knew I wanted to make this video, not to be contrarian for sport, but to dispute the confidence of the claim. Because I'll be transparent, I do believe we're living in a simulation, or at least in something simulation-like. Whether that's a generated reality, an emergent construct, a world that behaves like it's being rendered from deeper roles. And here's my first question. If someone tells you they've ended a cosmic theory with one mathematical argument, should you trust the finality or investigate the assumptions? So here I am. And if the anti-simulation argument is wrong, it won't be because the math is sloppy. It'll be because the interpretation is too literal. So what the math ends the matrix argument is actually saying in plain English, and you can look this up on Google and find the articles. But the article leans on famous results in logic, especially Godel's incompleteness theorem, to argue something like this. And I'll try to put it in simple terms. Any powerful rule-based system, like mathematics, contains truths that cannot be proven from inside the system. Therefore, a purely computational theory of everything cannot be complete. And therefore, reality must include something non-algorithmic. Therefore, reality cannot be a simulation because simulations are algorithmic. It's a clean chain. Sounds devastating <laughs> to the simulation argument, but the vulnerability is right in the middle. The argument assumes a simulation must be like our simulations, like a computer program running step-by-step -step code, like a video game engine, or like a digital machine in the way we currently understand machines. And that assumption is not a law of nature. It's a limitation of imagination. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine a caveman finding a smartphone, and he taps the screen, sees moving images, hears voices, and he decides with full confidence it must be powered by tiny hamsters inside because that's the only kind of power that the caveman can conceive. Now, is he stupid? No. He's bounded by his era. And here's the question. What if we're doing the same thing with the word simulation? Sometimes the veil isn't hiding reality. Sometimes the veil is just our definitions wearing a lab coat. And I think the key confusion here is the limits of deception versus the limits of existence. Because here's the simplest way I can put my objection. Just because we can't fully describe reality from within a formal system doesn't mean reality can't be generated by a deeper one. There's a quote I love, and it goes like this. The map is not the territory. The anti-simulation claim treats our map of reality, which is basically our mathematics, our proofs, as if they must fully contain the territory. But what if they can't? What if they never could? And as the great statistician George Box said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. That's not cynicism. To me, that's humility. And if our best descriptions are always partial, then incompleteness doesn't refute simulation theory. It simply reminds us that embedded binds don't get God's eye access. So the article's main assertion and leap, we can't fully formalize it, therefore it can't be simulated, is a categorical mistake. And I'll ask you, have you ever noticed how often humans confuse I can't explain it with it can't exist? The universe doesn't need to be explainable to be real. Let me get that out to you as news. So why would it need to be fully provable to be simulated? Godel doesn't kill simulations. He kills our certainty. Now let's talk about Godel in human terms. Godel showed that if you build a strong enough system of rules for doing math, there will be true statements that the system can't prove using its own rules. That's a little bit wild. It's profound. Yes, it's also frequently misused. Because Godel is about what can be proven inside a system. But a simulation isn't proved. A simulation is run. A universe isn't a textbook. 
Reality doesn't sit there writing formal proofs of itself. Reality simply unfolds. So when someone says, Godel implies reality can't be computational, what they often mean is a complete, perfect final theory can't be computational. But that's not the same as saying reality can't be generated. Think of a video game. The characters inside the game might never discover the full source code. In fact, they probably won't. They might find contradictions, paradoxes, limits, and maybe some unknown unknowns. But that doesn't mean the game isn't running. In fact, most games are designed so that the player sees only what's rendered, only what's relevant, and only what's accessible. So here's the question. Are we disproving the simulation or just rediscovering that minds inside a system can't fully step outside the frame? Because incompleteness might be evidence against omniscience, not evidence against the matrix. Non-algorithmic might not mean non-simulatable. So this part matters, so I'm going to slow down a little bit here. But when the article says reality has non-algorithmic features, that phrase can mean multiple things, and I'll break it down here. It can mean not computable by any machines we can build. It can mean not computable by any classic step-by-step -step rules. It can mean non-computable from within the system by embedded observers. Or simply, we don't know yet how to formalize it. And those are very different claims. And the anti-simulation argument tends to treat them all like the same thing. But here's the twist. Even if there are truths we can't compute from inside, a simulator could still generate outcomes by using deeper physics or using processes we simply don't understand. For example, our own universe may contain phenomena that appears fundamentally random, like quantum randomness. And I'm not saying that this proves it's a simulation. I'm saying it shows we already live in a reality where step-by-step -step predictability is not guaranteed. And if our universe includes randomness, emergence, or irreducible complexity, I don't think that prevents the simulation. It just means the simulation might be stranger than a simple algorithm. So let me ask you something. What if non-algorithmic isn't a wall, but simply a sign that reality's engine is a lot deeper than our current metaphors? Simulation theory doesn't require reality to be simple. It requires reality to be produced. A simulation doesn't have to be digital, tidy, or even fully specifiable. This is another hidden assumption in the math ended it narrative. The idea that a simulation must be a neat package of rules that can be fully written down. But simulations can be probabilistic, analog, self-modifying, emergent. They can even be layered, where only what gets observed gets rendered. They could be messy, like weather models, where predictions become chaotic. Even in our world, a lot of simulation-like systems aren't clean. They're statistical approximate, and they're not perfectly compressible. So if someone says a simulation must be algorithmic, my response right away is a simulation must be generated, but generation can be stranger than code. Now here's the quote I used to keep myself grounded. It's from Wittgenstein, and it says, the limits of my language mean the limits of my world. And the point isn't that reality ends where words end. The point is that our access ends where our conceptual tools end. As John Wheeler said, as the island of our knowledge grows, so do the shores of our ignorance. That's another good one. So if the simulator is a higher order of intelligence, or if the field itself is the generating substrate, then algorithm might be the wrong word to use entirely. Maybe the true simulator isn't a computer like we think it is. Maybe it's something closer to a mind. Remember Paul Davies wrote that book, In the Mind of God? Something closer to source. And here's a question for you. What if the universe is less like a machine and more like a thought that thinks itself into form? People argue about code all the time, but the deeper question is the ontology of experience. What reality is, not just how we describe it. Now here's the strongest part of my rebuttal. 
The anti-simulation argument assumes too much about the simulator itself. To actually disprove simulation theory in any robust way, you'd need to show something like, there's no possible substrate that could generate our universe. There's no possible higher level reality that could instantiate these laws. There's no process. There's no digital analog probabilistic or exotic other process that could produce this world. But the math ended it. <laughs> that argument just doesn't fly because it shows something more modest, that a complete, consistent, fully formalized description of reality may be impossible from within certain systems of reasoning. And I think that's important because it doesn't eliminate simulation. It eliminates a particular fantasy that we can close the book on reality with a final equation. In fact, I'd argue just the opposite. Incompleteness is exactly what you'd expect inside a simulation like reality because the system can be lawful while still being opaque to its inhabitants. So when people hunt for glitches in the matrix, maybe they're asking the wrong question. Maybe the signature of a generated reality isn't a bug in the code. Maybe it's the persistent fact that reality is coherent but never fully graspable. So here's the question I'll leave hanging. What if the very thing the article calls disproof is actually a fingerprint, evidence that we're inside a system too deep to reverse engineer from within? And the moment that you demand a complete description, you may already be doing theology in a lab coat. So this is where I land. I don't touch down in certainty. That's the trap on both sides. But I do land here. The article doesn't end simulation theory. Not at all. It argues against a simplistic version of it. A version where the simulator is a digital computer, like the ones that we create, and the universe is fully reducible to step-by-step -step computations. And I think that's a straw man because simulation theory at its very deepest isn't about PlayStation graphics. It's about the possibility that our experience world is derivative, meaning generated by deeper laws, deeper intelligence, and deeper structure in the field. And if that's the case, then mathematics doesn't slam the door shut. Mathematics simply reminds us of something ancient and humbling, that reality may be more profound than our ability to capture it. So I'll end with one clean layperson question, because it's the question behind all of this. If we can't fully prove the universe from inside the universe, does that mean it isn't simulated? Or does it mean the simulation is so advanced that our proofs can only touch its shadow? Because maybe, maybe the matrix isn't made of code at all. Maybe it's made of meaning. And maybe the real evidence won't come as a theorem. Maybe it will come as that quiet, unsettling moment when you realize the veil isn't outside of you. It's actually the part of you that keeps insisting reality must fit inside your definitions. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little tour through my reasoning of why the universe is not a simulation argument is quite flawed. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little foray through my reasoning of why the universe is not a simulation argument is quite flawed. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments section. I make videos about conspiracy theory, science, and well, anything that opens your mind. So if you enjoyed this type of video, subscribe and like so you can watch more of my content, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.